This may be the strangest find in Egyptian history. In 1982, a Pyramidion was discovered near the Red Pyramid of Dashur. It's the only surviving Pyramidion from an Old Kingdom Pyramid. A Pyramidion is a miniature version of a pyramid and usually used as a top stone to finish off the pyramid. But what makes this such a strange find? Well, the Pyramidion was measured and the researchers quickly realized that something wasn't right. The Pyramidion slope angle did not match the angle of the Red Pyramid at all. Not only that, they also measured the Pyramidion and found these values. They found that the format of the pyramid corresponded to the Great Pyramid of Giza, some 30 kilometers north of the Red Pyramid in Saqqara. The height was measured to be exactly 100 centimeters, and the width 157 centimeters. In other words, 1 meter times pi divided by 2 meters. For some reason, this didn't raise any eyebrows from the archaeological community and hasn't been commented on ever since. After watching my other videos on the sacred Egyptian cubit and the meter, can we say that the ancient Egyptians were using a meteorological system related to the meter? Were the Great Pyramids really tombs? If you have opened any history book on ancient Egypt, chances are you will have read that the Great Pyramids were originally built as tombs to ensure the pharaoh's safe passage to the afterlife. But can we really confidently make that claim? While it is true that the afterlife occupied a central role in Egyptian cosmology, no mummy was ever found in the Great Pyramids. And then we have Sneferu, the father of Khufu often associated with the Great Pyramid of Giza, who has allegedly built at least three pyramids during his lifetime, namely the Maidan Pyramid, the Ben Pyramid and the Red Pyramid. Sneferu's mummy has also never been found in any of the pyramids. Why would Sneferu have built the other pyramids if they were meant as tombs? Archaeologists usually explain that he must have built the other pyramids as a result of trial and error from the previous failed pyramid projects, such as the Bend Pyramid. But can we really say that with confidence? The construction of the Great Pyramids is certainly one of the biggest mysteries in history. There are just so many open questions concerning the construction process of the Great Pyramids. First, the Great Pyramid was made of about 2.5 million limestone blocks, each weighing 2.5 tons on average. If that wasn't crazy enough already, no two blocks are the same. Second, some of the heaviest stones are estimated to weigh around 70 to 80 tons. They were transported from up to 900 kilometers away and lifted to a height of about 65 meters. The most common explanation is that they were transported via ship along the Nile River. However, that would require an extremely high level of craftsmanship to say the least. Another problem that doesn't get much attention are the shafts under the pyramids, which were cut with astounding precision. Something you probably never even thought of is the oxygen problem below ground. If you are digging a long tunnel underneath the pyramid, how do you make sure you don't suffocate? And then we have the alignments, the geometric knowledge embedded in the pyramids, the ambitious timeline, the bureaucratic apparatus needed for it, and so on and so on. How much would it cost to build the Great Pyramid today? The Great Pyramid of Giza is a true marvel of engineering, and it's no surprise that it would be an expensive project to recreate today. The pyramid is made up of over 2 million blocks of stone, weighing a total of 5.75 million tons. Quarrying and transporting these materials alone would cost a significant amount. In addition to materials, the pyramid required a team of skilled engineers and workers to construct it, using advanced techniques. It's difficult to estimate the exact cost, but it's safe to say that building the Great Pyramid today would be a multi-billion dollar project, taking into account materials, labor, land, utilities and transportation. Based on the size and complexity of the project, as well as the cost of materials and labor, it is reasonable to estimate that the cost would fall somewhere between 5 billion and 10 billion dollars in today's currency. Personally, I think this is the very cheap end of estimates. A higher estimate would look something like 30 to 50 billion dollars, or even much more than that. And keep in mind, this is all under the assumption that we could build this masterpiece of engineering in the first place. This is the sacred Egyptian cubit. A cubit is the distance of a human's elbow to the tip of the middle finger. It was one of the most important measurement units in the ancient world. A lot of people think it was arbitrarily based on the length of a random king's arm. Well, the peculiar thing is that one royal Egyptian cubit equals 0.5236 meters. Now what's so special about this number? Imagine you have a circle with radius 1. What's its circumference? It's 2 pi. In other words, 2 times 3.14159 and so on. Now divide the circle into 12 slices. What do you get? You get exactly the royal Egyptian cubit. In other words, 30 degrees of the 1 meter circle. How can this be? Is this just coincidence? Could the ancient Egyptians have known about the meter? You'll find the answer in the next video. In the last video I told you about the strange relationship between the meter and one of the most fundamental ancient Egyptian units of measurement, the royal Egyptian cubit. First, let's check the history of the meter. The meter was officially chosen in the 18th century as a scientific unit of measurement based on Earth's circumference. To be exact, one ten millionth part of the distance from North Pole to Equator along a meridian. You could think of it as a harmonic subdivision of a cosmic distance. Keep that in mind. Now this is where it gets scary. Any physicists watching? Then you might know this number. It's the speed of light in meters per second. Now watch what happens if we use this number as a coordinate, simply by removing a few powers of 10. Let's type it into Google Maps. And where do we land? Right on the apex of the Great Pyramid of Giza. Did you know that 
the Great Pyramid is actually a scale model of planet Earth? If you multiply the height and the perimeter of the Great Pyramid by a factor of 43,200, you'll get these numbers. Do you recognize them? It's the radius and the equator of planet Earth. Now you might ask, why the number 43,200? Isn't that just a random number? Well, no. Let me show you why. Ever since the dawn of time, the number 43,200 has had a special significance. Let me ask you this, how many hours are in a day? Now, how many minutes are in a day? And finally, how many seconds are in a day? The answer is 86,400. Now, if you divide 86,400 by 2, you get 43,200. But still, that doesn't really explain the significance of the number 43,200. So why exactly this number? In the previous video, I showed you that the Great Pyramid of Giza is a 1 2 43, scale model of planet Earth. Let's talk about why the number 43,200. In the 1930s, airplane footage has by coincidence revealed that the Great Pyramid sends up a mysterious light signal at a very specific moment in time. The shadow causes an illusion on the side of the pyramid, making it almost look like a prison. Crazy, right? This is caused by the indentation in the Great Pyramid, which by the way would have caused significant engineering difficulties on behalf of the pyramid builders. Did you know that the Great Pyramid actually has 8 sides and not 4? Anyway, can you guess which moment that is? It's the equinox. In other words, around March and September 21st. It's the moment in time when night and day have the same length, therefore the name equinox. You can think of it as a moment of cosmic balance, a fundamental concept of Egyptian cosmology. On those days, due to the axial tilt and our position relative to the sun, there's an equivalent amount of light and darkness. In other words, day and night each last for 43,200 seconds.